welcome it was long overdue but i'm back with dominion uh today well at at the date of recording this it might release tomorrow but today released uh, dominion menagerie the new expansion from yeah from dominion and this is a little bit first impressions after i've played like 10 games or so maybe even less and um and uh first impressions review thingy like uh, early review and i will go over the cards probably only over the cards the ways and the uh, events i will probably skip let's let's it depends how long the video goes because the ways and the events of course i don't have really much experience yet uh we'll see so the first card is black hat you can read on your own and what every card does i won't read it out loud so black hat um seems uh very hard to play at first glance um so i think i only had one kingdom with it and it, i it was the uh, base uh, the recommended kingdom with the base set with gardens and my opponent went for gardens and i didn't and got black hats instead and got my opponent very many curses and i drew so many cards and that was just amazing <clears throat> but i think it's mm, it can be quite powerful but uh it really of course heavily depends on the kingdom if there's like ways to get victory cards early game like with not really early game but uh uh before the end game then this is just really really good if 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 uh, you remodel into provinces or triumph or whatever i can see this card being very good where you like accidentally in quotation marks gain extra cards uh extra victory cards early this seems really good of course this is just brutal against rebuild and stuff uh yeah yeah slay is okay -ish. um two horses of course is really good it's like a delayed double lap but uh, <clears throat> opening with it seems pretty bad because uh you're not developing your board very much uh, other than gaining those horses which takes the whole shuffle and then um uh, then you don't really add do only draw coppers as well so you rather want to trash early or uh, of course uh, get get card that gives you like any money so that you can get the five and six costs which slay doesn't really do so um it might be better like early uh, later game when you have an engine and this is uh, the payload that you play so that your uh, engine doesn't fall apart when you're greening of course there's also this watchtower part where you can uh, put the card into your hand or, to, or into your into your deck i'm not exactly sure how good that is yet so i think this is like a mediocre card here supplies though i think is pretty good uh, two cost uh, the best of the two costs here um this seems like a duration market without a plus bias or a duration peddler rather um because you get the horse onto your deck which is amazing so you pretty much guaranteed a six card hand next turn and so it's basically uh but you're not drawing a card this turn from the coin so it's basically a peddler i would say which seems a pretty good deal if you ask me so i'm not sure when to get it though if you have five two definitely open with with supplies but on four three not sure it definitely depends on the kingdom of course but you definitely i think want one supplies in most decks and i can even see getting multiple supplies in some decks camel train is probably the worst card in the set i've seen so far like none of these effects are all that great you don't really want to exile a gold often and and the problem is if you open up camel train getting to six makes it even harder so even if you want gold um the camel train isn't all that great so i'm not exactly sure an exile a non-victory card from the supply can you ha help win a split i guess 
but it doesn't give you any economy. So getting those important cards, it doesn't help you getting those important cards to win the split. So I think um, to, at first impression, this card seems rather bad. Goat Herd is kind of like a Forager, I would say. So, but I think Forager is stronger. I'm not exactly sure. Like, um, if you draw a card, of course, it's pretty amazing. Because then it's basically... Let's say you trash a copper, then it's basically an upgrade. Yeah, basically. And uh, if you don't draw a card, it's worse than a Forager. So I'm not sure. It might be on the power level of Forager. I can't really tell yet. But it feels pretty good if your opponent gets Goat Herd and you get Goat Herd and your opponent plays Goat Herd first. Uh, just like Forager, when your opponent plays Forager first. Then you can trash an estate and still get the money. So um, not sure I like this card because it really depends on what your opponent draw, how your opponent draws. But Forger, you, I've had the first impression like that as well, and it didn't turn out all that bad. Even if you uh, don't get a benefit on for, uh, on if you are the first player to trash an, a copper or an estate. So yeah, I think it's a pretty strong card. Uh, I'm not sure how swingy it is though. Just uh, like that scrap, I think as well, it's a pretty strong treasure. Um, trashing a state to gain silver horse is what I usually did. So you open scrap, silver, or I don't know, scrap. Double treasure is all, all, of course also good if you have a. In one game, there was money lender, so. Uh, Scrap Moneylender was a great opening. Moneylender to trash copper, scrap to tra trash silver and horses. Uh, to trash estates to gain silver and horses. Uh, and later in the game, you can trash golds to get all six benefits, which is really good. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, Scrap is a pretty powerful card that's a treasure. Because it's also a treasure that you uh, uh, is not bad in the late game can still get great great benefits if uh, you can later trash for example the money lender to get four of those benefits as well so like card action silver horse or card action buy and horse or whatever so this seems really strong to me uh, sheepdog uh, is of course obvious a great card that you want with gainers because then it's a lab so um, like any workshop variant, of course, this is really, really good. And uh, if you can gain this even to hand, a sheepdog to hand, you can immediately play it, which is just really cool interaction. Uh, I can't tell yet how good it is. I uh, don't think I've played enough with it, but it's a very a card that I definitely enjoy. Snow Village is also a card that I can't really tell yet how good it is. Um, <clears throat> because I was in all kingdoms, I was really scared to buy it. Because ignore any further actions you get this turn, which is really bad with like any cantrips or any a card that gives plus only plus one action. Uh, so I'm not sure how the deck is supposed to look like that you want to build with Snowy Village, because um you want to play if if there are cantrips you can play of course the cantrips first and then snowy village and then the terminals but you might not want uh, you might not um draw them in them in the right order also you definitely want the snowy village in your starting hand which means you want more snowy villages to guarantee in the starting hand but more snowy village seems bad because the other snowy villages you draw are bad so to me, I was not really impressed with it on the power level, but it can sure be a powerful card. I just don't know it yet because I don't know how to play with it. Yeah, because like the optimal ways, of course, no village and then free terminal draw cards or five, of course, terminal draw cards. But how can you guarantee unless there is a scheme or whatever in there? Uh, or any card that can top deck a card and you have s two snowy villages so you like courtyard like snowy village courtyard might be a good thing you play snowy village courtyard 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 top deck the other snowy village and do the same thing next turn that seems pretty solid yeah but other than that 
seems like pretty bad in most other occasions, so I'm not sure about that. Stockpile uh, is like cursed gold. No, it's not cursed gold. It's a like a um, it's like a spoils, right? Because it's a one-time gold with a plus buy. But you can get it back if you buy more stockpiles. Or, but you, how many stockpiles do you really want? So uh, I, I can see buying it uh, on your opening if you want a high cost card to spike like an early forge or any other card that is expensive like an artisan or an altar that you really want early. That might be worth it because later, with, especially with artisan and altar, you can just gain the stockpile with it uh, without much uh, opportunity cost and get it back if you want to. But yeah, it's I don't think it's a very powerful card, but it certainly has pretty good use cases, I think. Bounty Hunter seemed like really, really strong in the games I've played. Like being able to trash an estate and still get plus three on your, uh, on your f first sh uh, shuffle is just, just so good. And it give, even gives an action. It, I think it would be even good <laughs> if it didn't give an action. And of course, it's only for your first estate, but it should give you already a big boost. You can easily open Bounty Hunter and card that doesn't give any money and still hit double five. Can you? Yeah. No, you can't. But uh, Bounty Hunter is silver and you can trash... Uh, 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 an estate and still get double five which seems not possible with most other cards that you can open with so this seems like really really strong then cardinal um i like the card very much uh it's a fixed knight i think uh of course it's not great as an opener because there are not many cards to hit yet but that's the same, of course, with uh, knights. Let, uh, which one is the one that gives plus two coins? I think Dame Sylvia, right? So um, if you compare it to Dame Sylvia, Cardinal is one cheaper. And of course, Dame Sylvia is more brutal. But um, Cardinal can't die, of course. So if you, I can see it pretty strong if you can build an engine that plays like multiple Cardinals in a row and just get rid of all the cards from your opponent's deck <clears throat> of course if the pile is empty they can't get the cards back and this is probably the thing you want to do like if if you lost the split or even if you want to split and want to get rid of all the cards important cards of your opponent like uh, adding cardinals as your payload seems pretty strong to really wreck your opponent like if 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 there's only one village and you constantly trash your opponent villages it seems like really really strong but I don't think the card is too strong, but certainly a good way to add to your engine and get good payload. Cavalry, uh, I think, is a pretty bad card. So, Slay, if, oh, I didn't want to add that here. Slay uh, gains you two horses and Cavalry gains you two horses, but costs four. So, which means basically that you only really want the the cavalry when you want the on gain effect and the on gain effect is all not that great so you basically i think it's really good if you open free four you get a free free cost turn one get the four cost which is cavalry turn two and have a chance to basically um, be able to play the free cost on turn two which can be really, really strong if it's a treasure or, um, yeah, a treasure mostly. Uh, this seems a pretty good use case for cavalry. And of course the other use case is an engine. Like I said earlier with Slay, just when you want to um, add uh, horses to your engine so that you don't stall out when you green. But, uh, Getting the terminal space for cavalry just to gain two horses seems rather uh, small. So I don't think you want to do that very, very often. So I think you only want cavalry basically when you can use the on gain effect. Like you have 
uh, only treasures in, in your hand and lots of actions, like a really dud turn. So you're basically guaranteed to draw into a village and continue your turn and then you added a cavalry to your deck for the opportunity cost to save your turn, which seems a very good opportunity cost here. But other than that, I don't think cavalry is all that strong. A uh, groom is a card I haven't seen yet. Yeah, I don't think I've played a game with groom yet. So I can't tell anything about it. So I have to read it even. Gain a card costing up to four. If it's an action card, gain a horse. If it's a treasure card, gain a silver. If a victory card, plus one. So the use case is, of course, is a workshop. Uh, it's a, so it's a workshop variant or an ironworks variant rather. So <clears throat> if it's an action card, gain a horse. So with Iron Rocks, you can play multiple Iron Rocks and it's not ter non-terminal. Here you gain horses. Seems both pretty useful. You, uh, It's uh, slowing down now because it's terminal for uh, making your engine better or more consistent. Uh, treasure card, gain a silver. <clears throat> uh, this seems better than Iron Rocks. In man, uh, in like, uh, for adding payload to your deck, then in um, then ironworks, you can get two silvers with it. I'm not sure how often you want to do that though. And victory card like gardens, I would say it's a use case for that. So it's a, a cantrip garden scanner, which seems pretty strong. You can really. Um, do groom gardens maybe? So you groom for grooms. Gain horses, and then all the grooms are cantrip uh, garden scanners. Seems pretty cool, and then you can gain two silvers with it. Might be a good gardens card. Yeah, but uh, other than that, I can't really tell much because I haven't played with it. So horsery is really mm, can be really nuts. <laughs> so uh, if there's a workshop variant where you can gain things uh, early. So, uh, like, Workshop itself. To play Workshop, discard three coppers, gain three horses. This is just... Wow. This makes your kickstart, your engine, just really, really strong. Other than... Uh, usually, this is just an expensive village. But if there are gainers, which you definitely wa uh, want in, in engines anyway, horse really is just so, so really, really bonkers good. I'm really impressed with it. Uh, my, maybe I'm overvaluing it, but host really seems like really, really strong. Then there's Village Green. Uh, I love this card. It's, it's a really cool card. Um, you have to keep in mind that, of course, if you don't choose the plus one card, plus two actions, it's terminal. Um, so if you have two village green, the first you want the actions now and the second you want the actions next turn. Yeah, but it's a really, really strong card, I think, as well. Just like Fishing Village is, because uh, getting the actions next turn is just so strong that to add consistency to your deck. Uh, <clears throat> but of course, it's uh, really, really strong when you can activate the reaction part. Like any warehouse seller variant, uh, I played with Tactician and Warehouse in the Recommended Kingdom, and it was just so, so good. I was spinning circles a little bit, but I added, draw, I've drawn so many cards with it and added so much consistency to my deck with it. So, uh, it was so cool. So if there's any way to discard cards, uh, Village Green is like a must include in the deck because it mitigates the effect like mill or something um, where you can discard for benefit and still play it. It's just so good. And usually you want at least one village green to play for next turn to make, uh, to have the actions and the card draw next turn. The effect is just really good. Like just like ghost town, imagine ghost town, but just way better. I think it's village green. Barge seems rather simpler here at first, but I think uh, it's a slightly weaker Wharf, but Wharf is an amazing card, one of the best fives uh, uh, overall. And Barge, Barge is just slightly worse. So I've played 
uh, a fishing village barge game and it worked just like fishing village wharf <clears throat> uh, you just draw a little bit less i guess but um uh if you can draw your deck you uh, can play like let's say you split uh barge is five five you can play four barges to draw your deck and play the fifth barge to kickstart your next turn and add consistency and i love consistency and this is just really really good and the buy is not irrelevant and of course it compares to margrave which is also an amazing card i think they are similar in power level um because when you want, want margraves you want multiples and then the disadvantage when playing multiples kicks in and gives your opponent consistency but yeah i think barge is a really strong card Coven, I think, is not a strong card unless you can mitigate the effect that it doesn't draw cards. So, um, <clears throat> like a minion deck or any draw to X deck, uh, you definitely want to add like two covens or something. But in any other deck, I think it's way too slow to as an attack. Um, yeah, unless you can somehow benefit from the non-terminal money like in a tech, double tactician or something that might be pretty strong and uh, draw to x engines and so on but in general i think coven is way way too slow a displace is a really really cool card it seems like a rather expensive uh, remodel or uh, something uh, on that trash for trash for benefit card but you can do so many cool things with it. Just uh, the usual remodel gold into province that you learn in the base game. Uh, you can displace the gold into a province and uh, uh, displace the gold into a province and you might, through another card or whatever, uh, get the gold back for whatever, with a bandit or whatever. However, you gain the gold that you trashed. So. This seems like a really, really strong engine, or not engine, like a combo uh, that you can do. And um, <clears throat> um, yeah, also just the just the thing that you don't lose the free points um, from the estates that you remodel into four costs. It's just a good thing. If you open 5-2, just open this place. It's a really, really good opener. And... Uh, uh, there's so many things you can do with it uh, that this is a really good card. It's nothing special. I don't think it's a very strong five cost card, like a mediocre one, because the competition in five cost is really strong. But uh, if you want a treasure benefit card for whatever reason, like a remodel that you want one in most decks or replace or whatever, um, this is one that you definitely want. Falconer, really, really love this card. Uh, gaining to your hand always feels good. Uh, I mean, you can only gain four costs, but uh, if you play a village, Falcon or gain a village into hand, basically it replaced itself. So it basically drew you a card. And um, <clears throat> of course, it's not that strong, strong on its own, but if your opponent usually also gets a Falconer, and when just on the fact when you have a Falcon on hand and your opponent gets a Falconer, you can play it basically for free. It's just already good and there's usually attack cards or um maybe i mean there are so many duration cards that there are um that there's often uh, a card with multiple types that you want that falcon is just so good i think uh of course i would say i, I don't think it's a very powerful card on its own it needs support in that you can play it for free uh or without paying an action but um uh, Falconer is even without it a pretty solid card if you have an engine going and can gain like the villagers to your hand for free. Fisherman is I guess a little bland, a little boring. Um, it's just a peddler of course that you can get for two coins which is relevant if you can open with it. So um, like the cases where you want to open poacher you definitely want to open Fisherman, of course, because you never get the disadvantage and it just costs two on your first turn, which it seems pretty good. Keep in mind that if you want two Fisherman, the second one definitely costs 
uh, five because the first fisherman is a discard pile is something that clicked uh, uh, that I only noticed when it happened. Um, yeah, but of course, a peddler is not that impressive. There are kingdoms where you want a peddler. There's also the trash for benefit. You buy it for two and expand it into a province later or whatever. Um, yeah, you can do cool things with it. But I think Peddler is a stronger card than Fisherman, of course, because uh, you can make make it cost zero, while this costs oh, the first one costs always two, and the second one costs then five. Uh, this also makes it a little bit wonky if you draw your deck and you just trigger reshuffle. Maybe you want to gain a Fisherman with a workshop or something. Then uh, no, if you discard piles empty, not if you draw piles empty. My bad. Uh, yeah, but it's still, uh, like, if you have, like, an engine with seller or um, seller variant, then this makes it really bad with gainers. But usually in engines, you can gain this with workshop variants pretty reliably. Yeah, I haven't played, I think I only played one or two games with it, and uh, it was never that impressive. Uh, I think Peddler is just stronger in general if you compare it to that. Gatekeeper, I think, is also not that strong of a card. It's so slow. Uh, you don't get any benefit when you play it. Then you just uh, deny your opponent the card that you that they gained for a little bit. I mean, it can be pretty impressive if you play multiples, but it's so slow that I feel it will be very hard to really shut the opponent down. And you really can't shut your opponent down because it's only for cards they don't have in exile yet. So, I mean, I don't think it does a lot. I think it's way worse than Swarm Pack, and Swarm Pack is not that great of a card. I think it's pretty weak. Yeah, just uh, how much fun, think how much, how much fun Watchtower Hamlet engines are, like any draw to X engines. And then you have like Hunting Lodge, which is the whole engine in one card. Yeah, this uh, Hunting Lodge is pretty strong, I think. Um, if there's like any terminal or even like a coven, for example, which we had earlier here, uh, a coven or anything, uh, you can build cool engines with it and it's so much fun. I love draw to X engines and Hunting Lodge is really, really cool. Uh, keep in mind, it's only five cards, so it's not that strong as library or watchtower engines where you have six cards, but um, yeah, Hunting Lodge is, I think, a very powerful card that definitely deserves to cost five. Um, so comparing it to other five cost villages, I'm not sure. Like uh, Bandit Camp... Yeah, I think it's better than Bandit Camp, honestly, and definitely better than like Festival or um, what are other five cost villages? Can't think of one. Oh, there one that gains a hex. What's it called? Cursed Village, uh, which is similar to this, but it gains a hex. So I think I like Hunting Lodge in general more than most five cost villages, honestly. <clears throat> and there's of course bazaar. Yeah, but I think you can. It just generally feels better if you can make hunting lodge work. And being able to not need draw to build your engine, just add terminal payload and hunting lodges seems just really really cool and strong. A uh, kiln is a really really cool card. I like it a lot, but I don't. I don't think it's very very strong. Uh, I think kill money is a really s solid strategy. Um, other than that, you kill you want kill like very late when you have plenty of villages so that you can play kill and the card that you want to copy. But then it's probably too late and the piles are already low. Where like you need so many villages and to draw your deck so that you can play your kill to get that extra village or. Uh, yeah, you generally want to kill in a village, I guess. So then the village pile might be already empty. I'm not sure. Uh, the one game where I gained it, I was not happy with it. And on other games, I think I ignored it. So yeah, kill is 
not that impressive. I haven't tried kill money, but I think kill money might be quite good. So you open kill on 5-2, for example, easily hit 5. Uh, if you hit 6 here, you can get, uh, buy gold and then kill the gold. Uh, seems like haggler money or bandit money or similar to that. Probably better than haggler money. Uh, better than bandit money is probably close to haggler money. So, yeah, this uh, kill money seems rather better. Uh, livery I, or library, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, write in the comments if you know. Um, plus three coins is already quite a good deal for five fiver. But um, of course, money is not the strongest thing you can have. So, um, <clears throat> but you, this should be easily gain you horses regularly. So this is plus three money, gain a one shot lab, which seems pretty amazing payload. Uh, for your engine and cons payload and consistency with the horses. So I think it's a pretty solid card, but I haven't played with it yet, so I don't know. I haven't played with Mastermind either, which is uh, <clears throat> King's Court, Duration King's Court. So I can't really tell uh, how good it is, honestly, but it seems like a really cool card and I can't wait to play with it. Paddock is a card that you definitely want the plus action to trigger, I think. So you probably get it like in the mid game where when one pile uh, is close to being out and then uh, a non-terminal, like a minion effect, like plus one action plus two coins, like this was what minion partly does, mainly does. Uh, and then gain two horses. This is just really, really strong, I think. So... Yeah, I think this is a really cool card that seems pretty strong. Of course, not early game, but if you complain, uh, com not complain, compare it to Cavalry, which just gains two horses, and then look at Paddock, which gains two horses and gives you two money, which is a way big difference, and then an action per empty supply by that uh, you see the difference how and how much better Paddock than Cavalry is. I think. Yeah, Sanctuary, I don't think is a strong card, but you definitely want in most engines to buy one where you can put the, especially those who, who might crumble or uh, fall apart if if you add victory cards to them, like the fragile, fragile engines that you all hate. <laughs> and the plus buy is not irrelevant. So yeah, you, I mean, one sanctuary you want either for the plus buy or for the exile effect most of the time. So yeah, just get one in the mid game uh, most of the time. Yeah, Destruer is just bonkers to me. Like if you, uh, I, I didn't realize at first that it makes itself cheaper. And it's not that hard to gain just one card uh, mid turn so that is it's basically a lab for five, just like lab is. And if you can, I had a ga the game with Hostelry and Destry, and it's just so insane. You can discard all your treasure cards, get a thousand uh, horses, and then Destry is free. <laughs> it's just so insane. If you have even then additional buys, yeah. I mean, just like Petlock can be insane, Destry can be even more insane. So yeah, this is, a really really strong card and to me and one of the strongest cards maybe in the set. Wayfarer, I don't think I've played this with this yet. So let me read it. Plus three cards, you may gain a silver. This has the same cost as the last other card gained this turn. If any. Hmm. So uh if you play a Wayfarer, the next Wayfarer costs free. So this might work in a in, uh, in a big money game, but only if you can of course spike um free uh, free uh, six early like check of all trades gains a silver by a wayfarer yeah uh in engines you gain so many silvers with be treasure benefit like uh i'm not sure which ones that like scrap uh, which we saw earlier right 
scrap, yeah. So you, what you can do, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, is uh, the silver that you gain from it, you can trash later for a plus one action, plus one card and gain a silver. So what you can do here is, for example, add scraps and wayfarers and then use scrap to trash the silvers for plus one card, plus one action, gain a horse, for example. So there are probably there are definitely use cases where you can use the silvers, but if you can't handle all the silvers, yeah, then you probably don't want to buy this. And if animal fair seems like a weak card, uh, if it's the only buy, it's also pretty awkward. But yeah, animal fair plus four coins is not all that great. There's like wine merchant, it's not that great. And I mean, it's not the same. Or let's say there's merchant ship and it's not that great. So plus four coins is of course not that great. So you only really want the animal fair for the plus buy, I think. Or let's say for the coins and the plus buy combined. So if you can see a pile running out, you definitely want one animal fair for your payload. And then it's solid card plus one plus four coins and a buy is really good. And the fact that you can trash uh, something, an action card to do this. Of course, if there's a shelter game and you can trash your necro with it on turn one, uh, this seems pretty solid still as an opener because you get uh, plus four coins and second shovel already. And then you can spike, for example, a forge or something and might um, uh, can kickstart your engine really fast. So yeah, there's definitely use cases. It's not the worst seven cost, but it's no King's Court by <laughs> a long shot, of course, especially as this isn't a seven, you never want to pay seven for this anyway. And of course, uh, there's trash for benefit, like upgrade uh, animal fare into a province is definitely a thing you want to do and can do. So yeah, in general, uh, most of the cards I enjoy, there's no card reach I really hate. Like the weak cards like Camel Train and Cavalry that stood out to me. I'm not a big fan of, although the Cavalry on gain effect is neat. But like Camel, Camel Train is like the only disappointing card. Also cards like Snowy Village, which I don't understand yet, make me feel weird at least. I'm not sure how I like them. Fisherman is a little bland, but all the other cards are amazing and are a lot of fun to play. And not even thinking, of, uh, even ignoring the ways which are really cool and the events which are really cool and feel good. So I might revisit this video at a later time and uh, yeah, and go over the cards again, how they feel. If I continue to play that, I plan to upload maybe a few gameplay videos, but I'm not sure how I want to do that. If I want to join the league and uh, record the league games or whatever, uh, I'm really, really rusty. I make so many mistakes right now uh, that I'm really uh, not that great of a player. I mean, I was never that great of a player, but I mean, I, I was a decent player that could compete, could win some games against top players, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I am uh, hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that I will record some Dominion videos in the future. I hope you enjoyed the video and yeah, see you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching this episode. Check out these links here and also in the video description. Subscribe and follow if you want to be updated for future videos. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye.